All right, good evening, everyone, and welcome. Welcome to our presentation of the Dollar Empowered Community LLC, or the DEC, as we call it. We are so happy to have you here. I'm here with my beautiful and amazing co-founders. I'm Darshan Kendrick, the CEO and lead founder for this company that uh, is pitching to you today. All of you are potential investors, and we hope that you will enjoy this presentation and ask some good questions at the end. But again, welcome. We appreciate you taking this evening to spend some time with us to learn about our investment opportunity. I am going to go ahead and share my slide here. Um, and we are going to get started with this presentation. Um, okay, so before we get started, this presentation is being recorded, but it will be available for viewing on our website, which is www.dollarempowered.com in a few days. So if you have to step out, we will get that to you. Please save your questions until the end to make sure that we can cover the entirety of the presentation. And you can ask your questions in the chat at the very end. This opportunity is only available to Georgia residents, natural persons, so you can't be a business. Um, you will be vetted once you apply to be a part of this opportunity to make sure that you are a Georgia resident. Remember that this is an overview presentation. Please refer to the PPM for specifics and other details. And we will only be answering questions that are not included in the PPM for time's sake. We know a lot of people have a lot of questions, so if there's a question that is asked that's answered in the PPM, we will refer it to you. Please, please remember to have your video off for presentation purposes because we are recording this. Please, please, please have your video off. Um, you can go down to the settings and display to only to not show uh, ones that do not have their video on. It just makes for a better presentation for us. So if you could go ahead and turn your videos off, that would help us greatly um, to save our streaming um, capacity as well and make for a better um, presentation. So if everyone could go ahead and turn off your videos, we would greatly appreciate that. Uh, a few disclaimers, neither this presentation or offering is approved or endorsed by the Securities and Exchange Commission or any state regulatory agency. As with any investment, please consult with your attorney or financial professional before making any investment. Number three, this investment opportunity does involve risk to all a part of your investment. Therefore, please conduct your own due diligence before deciding to invest. Number four, the representations made during this presentation are subject to change when noted in the presentation and estimated when otherwise noted in this presentation. Number five, you are responsible for reviewing the entirety of the private placement memorandum, the PPM of the deck, which is on our website and it is updated accordingly. And last, this presentation is incorporated into the PPM and again will be available for viewing within two days after today's presentation. So before we get started again, I'm going to ask everybody again to please take off your video um, so that we can have a better presentation. So if you are on video, please click it so that you are off the video for us. We would appreciate that. Okay, so the overview, uh, overview of the pitch deck presentation. So you're going to learn about the deck from our secretary and co-founder, Stacy. You're going to learn who will execute this plan, meeting our founders and our management at, with, uh, from Edwina. You're going to learn more about what for this plan, the specifications on the proposed property from our superstar realtor and co-founder, Amy. You're going to learn how we will execute this plan by looking at detailed financial projections from our CFO and co-founder, Teresa. And then last but not least, you're going to learn how to apply to invest from myself, the CEO, and the founder. So next, we are going to go to our co-founder, Stacy, to get it off. Good evening, everyone. I am Stacy Thibodeau, and tonight I'm going to talk about, tell you about the deck. Um, we're going to talk about um, really the overall objective um, that we're, why we're here, which is wealth generation through monthly residual incomes and capital appreciation. Next slide, please. So we, we are a real estate syndicate 
formed for the purpose of using investor funds to invest directly into commercial real estate property in DeKalb County. We registered with the state of Georgia in August of 2020, and we are presently a manager managed LLC. We have five original co-founders, three of which are real estate brokers, one accountant, and one legal assistant administrative person. Next slide, please. So we are, we're not an investment firm, so we won't be collecting large sums of money and hiring a money manager, manager to invest it. We're not an investment group, so therefore all the funds uh, are going to be required for a specific project. Next slide, please. And as I mentioned before, our overall objective really is going to be to purchase with cash a commercial real estate property in DeKalb County within an emerging neighborhood to make moderate cash producing upgrades and renovations to the property. Our intent is to rent it out and to hold it and sell in no less than five years. So the cash flow plus our capital appreciation strategy of buying, improving and holding is how we're gonna get the income and wealth generation. Next slide, please. Our why. You know, we believe that it's important to really uh, address this black-white wealth gap. Um, most of us do know that there's disparities, but when you actually see the data, it's, it's really a little bit eye-opening. So I'm just going to share some of the data with you here. Um, in Atlanta, the median household income for a white family is $83,722 compared to $28,105 for a black family. The average African-American owned business in Atlanta is valued at $58,085, while the average value of a white business is $658,264. As of 2020, black Americans constitute 14% of the nation's population but possess less than 3% of the nation's wealth. African Americans have 1.3 trillion, that's trillion with a T, of spending power. Why not use that to grow our wealth into generational wealth? And why now? Wealth provides families the means to invest in their children's education, start a business, relocate for new and better opportunities, buy a house, and have greater participation in the democratic process. So tonight, the DEC is presenting an opportunity for wealth generation through quarterly, uh, wealth generation through monthly residual incomes and capital appreciation. Next slide, please, Edwina. Who are we? I'm Edwina Clanton, and I'd like to introduce to you our team and allow them the opportunity to tell you a little bit about themselves. First, we have Darshawn Kendrick, our lead founder and CEO. Darshawn? Good evening, everyone. Again, thank you, Edwina, for that. I appreciate it. Again, I'm Darshawn Kendrick, the lead founder and CEO of the DEC. And I've spent the last 13 years of my professional career as a securities attorney, raising capital and helping with the legal compliance for companies, particularly black and brown founders and women founders, uh, to the tune of about half a billion dollars over the last 10 years. Uh, I am also a registered investment advisor representative here in the state of Georgia. So my firm is a registered investment advisory firm. And I am uh, also an elected official here in the state of Georgia, serving in the Georgia General Assembly for the last 11 years, representing DeKalb County, where I was born and raised in Gwinnett County. We, I have over five generations of Kendricks that have grown up in DeKalb County, and it's just a pleasure to be here on this call with these amazing women and to welcome you into this opportunity. Uh, some of the hobbies that I have are reading. I have a library full of financial books. Many of you know I have a Facebook group called Friends of Financial Freedom, and I love to tell people about how to become financially free. 
Uh, I also have a dog, Benji, that I uh, enjoy spending time with. And then in my former life, in the life after this, I am going to be a gourmet chef. So I love trying new recipes and cooking. So thank you, Edwina. All right. Thank you, Darshan. Next, we have Teresa Hardy, who is our CFO and co-founder. Teresa? Thank you, Edwina. Um, my, hi, everyone. My name is Teresa Hardy, and I am the CFO and co-founder in the day. Uh, in my professional years, I spent about 20 plus years problem solving for various corporations as an executive in the management consultant space. And i.e. that is leading global business transformation projects with multi-millions in revenue. I have lived in DeKalb County for 20 plus years. While living here, I have been a community activist as well as an advocate. I am currently the NAACP president and I'm also the treasurer for the Georgia NAACP. I have served on and still serving on several different boards and committees throughout DeKalb County and Georgia. I have one son named Jamarius, and we call him JT. He is a proud graduate of Southwest DeKalb High School, where I still go back and do volunteering in my spare time. Now, I am excited to be along with these women, these five black women, um, and they are powerful. And this, in this, we're able to fulfill our purpose and passion for building wealth in our own community. In my spare time, I like to read, I like to travel, and I like to dance. If you was at my party, you know that I like to dance. And I, uh, <laughs> and I look forward to working with you as an investor. Thank you, Edwina. All right, Teresa, thank you. Uh, next, we have Stacy Tibidor. She's our secretary and a co-founder. Stacy, good evening, everyone. Again, uh, my name is Stacy Tibido. I'm the secretary and co-founder of the group. I'm also a real estate broker uh, associate. My background uh, is in human resources management, where I have 20 plus years um, experience. The last 10 of those years, I specialized in change management through mergers and acquisitions in the medical and real estate publishing fields. Um, I just, I really enjoy being involved in my community. I'm on the board of directors for DeKalb Association of Realtors. I'm the president of Women's Council of Realtors DeKalb. I um, am on the board of my local chamber of commerce. And I was also appointed by my county commissioner to an advisory board for DeKalb County. I, I want to say I, I'm just so proud to be working along with these women and with all of you who choose to take advantage of this investment opportunity. I am looking forward to engaging our community in this opportunity to build wealth for really all of us. Thank you. All right. Thank you, Stacy. Next, we have Amy McCoy. She's our co-founder and real estate broker. Amy? Thank you, Edwina. Hello, everyone. As it was a beautiful day in the A, my name is Amy McCoy, and I'm the co-founder of The Deck and broker for my hometown realty group with multiple locations in the metro Atlanta area. I serve and am an advocate for democracy and housing as a second vice president of the Empire Board of Realtors. I have been a realtor for nearly 17 years. I, I was once the president of the West Georgia Board of Realtors and served with multiple state level committees and currently serve with the National Association of Realtors and the National Association of Real Estate Brokers. I facilitate residential and commercial real estate acquisitions for foreign and domestic clients and serve as a representative of Georgia for the United States Global Leadership Coalition through smart and effective investments in development and diplomacy to advance our interests at home and abroad. As a founder, I am committed, and as an investor, I am engaged. As a member of this dream team, I am ready to do my part. And in my leisure time, I enjoy golfing and walking through the trails of Georgia. Thank you for choosing to join us this evening. Edwina? Thank you so much for that, Amy. I am Edwina Clanton, a co-founder and real estate broker. 
I'm retired from the state of Georgia, and once I retired, I immediately pursued real estate license. I always wanted to be involved in real estate, and what better way than becoming an agent? My personality didn't allow me to stop there, so I went on to become a broker, and I opened up my own firm. I am a 20-year resident of DeKalb County, a homeowner, and currently a member of Leadership DeKalb, class of 2021, and you know we are the best class ever. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> I sit on many boards in my community and on professional boards in my industry. I'm a true advocate for private property rights and workforce housing. I enjoy gardening, traveling, and spending time with my family. I'm excited about being here with you and being a part of this opportunity. Thank y'all. Next slide. Our accountant who cho we chose is Sam Carter. Sam is a partner with Carter and Company International. He has an expert tax and business at, at, advisory firm with locations in three states. They are headquartered in DeKalb County, Georgia, and one of the leading firms in Atlanta. They combine their years of experience and expertise to make sure each client receives personal and professional attention. We are certainly happy to have them aboard. Next, we have our administrative assistant, who is Latoya Richardson. She is an integral part of this process, and she is top-notch. Next slide. So collectively, our founders have over 25 years of experience in real estate, over 13 years in law, over 10 years of raising capital and investment, and over 75 years in community engagement. The founders have known each other for the past several years and have worked closely together since August of 2020 on this project, consistently communicating with one another. Every member of this team has a vested personal and professional interest in this project because of the targeted location, which is DeKalb County, Georgia, where all of us either work, play, or live. All members of the founding team are motivated by a common mission to retain and build black wealth in our community of DeKalb County through real estate acquisition, income, and appreciation. Next slide, Amy. Thank you, Edwina. The target property we have identified is the Academy Professional Building. Next slide. The Academy Professional Building is located at 6886 Main Street in Lothonia, Georgia, and it is priced at $595,000. i have already negotiated and secured the potential asset. We are currently in due diligence. Now, as the broker of my hometown realty group, I will be compensated 3.5% of the commission. However, as a co-founder, this commission will be contributed to the purchase of the property and a reduction of cost to close. Recently, we have discovered some facts and we'll discuss as the founders to access the feasibility going forward with this property. We want to assure you our first priority is you as investors. Next slide. This is a unique but historic opportunity. Built in 1893 with a granite exterior, it has stood the test of time and was designated on the historic registry. Conveniently located on the corner lot in downtown Lothonia. This 7,168 square foot property features high traffic volume due to its location and has a well-known presence in the community with 13 current occupants. There is one space that is available. So at 93% occupancy, this property does feature a parking lot and is ADA compliant, including an elevator, which is why we considered it. Next slide. Being that we have three hardworking real estate brokers as co-founders, we are not oblivious to the risks. <laughs> so, what? so what are they, right? Well, a full list of the risks can be found in the PPM. But to help ease your mind, I will state a few. So as you can see on the screen, we do have market risks. 
We cannot control the market, so there is no way we can provide a guarantee. There are also regulatory risks. Because we are a private company, we're not required to file disclosures like public companies. The economy. Now, higher vacancy rates could be potential when, we're, when the rents are raised. Now, there might be not very many viable pieces of property to purchase, and that's because we're unable to guarantee that there will be commercial real estate to purchase that's within De uh, DeKalb County that fits within our stated budget. Because of our narrow geographic location, that is, the scope targeted properties is severely narrowed because of the narrow geographic location in which the debt would like to purchase commercial real estate. This can cause delays or impossibility in finding real estate that's in line with the investment strategy for this offering. Now, we're in a pandemic currently. There are certain factors outside of our control, like international and national pandemics and other emergencies. This can make the prospect for, profit, for profits volatile and unpredictable. And since this is a, a first round of financing, there is only so much commercial space that can be bought under $1 million. And the plan is to focus on one property successfully at a time when we discuss lack of initial diversification. Next slide. So what are the next steps? Acquiring the property after we raise the capital through our investors. As stated previously, our offer on Main Street was accepted below list price. We are currently in the due diligence process. The estimated timeline will depend on internal conditions. Sorry, you guys. Uh, of the of the property. So the estimated timeline will depend on internal conditions of the property. The goal is to provide some innovative updates in the post-COVID work environment. We have some administrative tasks to complete, like interviews for a property management company. So stay tuned because the estimated timeline for our investor tour is subject to change. And that's the discretion of the deck management. But we would like to host one of our investor tours by the fall of 2021. And we're hoping that we'll be, well, we're hoping that we won't be having to stand out in the cold in the winter of 2020. So we hope that you guys will look forward to coming to join us on our investor tour. Next slide. And Teresa. All right. Thank you, Amy. All right. Let's talk about the finances. And I just want to display, um, talk about this ongoing disclaimer. These financial projections are forward-looking and speculative. Although conservative, these projections are subject to change based on factors within and outside of control of the DAG founder and management. Next slide, please. <clears throat> we wanted to provide you with our NOI, Net Operating Income, and this is a snapshot of how the debt will operate the commercial property to make profits each year during the holding period. The holding period is five years. And you can see the addendum to the PP, uh, the addendums in the PPM. Next slide. On our financial ratio, this is how uh, it's going to work. The residential plus capital appreciation strategy. The payouts are made quarterly in proportion to your equity buy-in. For example, if you invest $100,000 out of the $1 million valuation, you own 10% of the debt. If profits are $20,000 a month, you receive 10% or $2,000 per month times three months, and the payout is per quarter, or a payout of $6,000. In addition to quarterly income over the five-year holding period, you will receive the addition of any appreciation from the sale of the building. So if the building sells for $2 million, 
you get 10% of profits or around 200,000 once it sells. So a $100,000 investment could potentially walk away with 320,000 after the five year holding period. Remember, this is an example. Next slide, please. The deck is currently seeking $860,000 total in cash with the use of funds are estimated as follows. This is, I, I just want to make sure that I reiterate, this is a proposed budget <laughs> uh, for the use of funds. The purchase of property at $550,000 with closing costs expected at $20,000 for cash yielding capital improvements at $85,000. If there's any improvements like roof, painting, windows, and other, those calculations are there as well. The contractor cost uh, for annual is $31,200. Having an accountant at $9,000, staff, part-time staff at $7,200, a real estate attorney at $15,000, uh, marketing at $5,000, and then having our reserves at 3%. This gives us a total estimate, estimated um, estimated expenses of $718,700 out of the $860,000 that we're uh, raising. Next slide. Next slide. And now you will hear from Darshan. All right. Good evening again, everyone. I'm going to close us out to talk about specifically our offering, which is an impact investment, and I'll talk about that a little later. Just a reminder that this opportunity, unfortunately, is only for Georgia residents. But thank you again for having us today. All right, so here's the ask. We're asking for $100 per membership unit with a 25-unit minimum. So $2,500 minimum per natural person. That means that businesses, unfortunately, cannot um, invest under this particular opportunity. So the valuation of the deck we are valuing at $1 million. Each co-founder has 1% or $10,000 invested for 100 membership units, except for myself as the co-founder, lead founder, and CEO who has $100,000 or 10,000 membership units, which is equal to about a 10% ownership. We currently have 8,375 membership units still available out of the 8,600 that were total available. So we're looking for a raise left of $837,500 after the founder's equity. Again, we're looking for a $2,500 minimum purchase per natural person at $100 per membership unit with a 25 membership unit minimum purchase. And I'm very excited that we have already, already secured funds even before this presentation. So for those of you that are on the line and are already investors with us, thank you so very much for putting your trust in this. So I mentioned about this being an impact investment. So I provided a source over here. And an impact investment is a financial investment that also considers how social or environmental factors contribute to the value of the investment, the overall value, in addition to the financial value. So investing in the deck is a type of impact investment because we have a social good that we are trying to do, which is to increase the sustained generational black wealth. All right, so the financing strategy, how are we raising and why? So I'll first point out that all legal services will be provided by my firm free of charge, uh, which is, again, a registered investment advisory firm here in the state of Georgia. And I'm the founder and CEO of Kendrick Advisory and Advocacy Group. But we are raising under the Invest Georgia exemption, or IGE, as is commonly known. We filed that with the Sec Georgia Secretary of State and received that, uh, notice that it was filed in April. And we are doing an interest rate offering. And so because we're doing an interest rate offering, no federal filing is required under IGE. Now, if you're a, an accredited investor, you can invest an unlimited amount with us. Um, and if you're not an accredited investor, you can only invest up to $10,000. Now, what is the difference between an accredited investor and a non-accredited investor? 
it's based on salary and on income um, and if you have a certain designation. So an accredited investor means that you have a um, salary of $200,000 or more that you can prove that you have had that salary in the past and you predict you're going to have that in the future, or you have a $1 million net worth that cannot include your primary residence, okay? Um, you're also an accredited investor if you have certain uh, series license, like a Series 7 or a Series 65 like I have, or a Series 63, or if you're a CFP. When you go to apply for this investment opportunity, there is actually a link on the application that you can click on to see if you meet the requirements of being an accredited investor. We will have to verify that you're an accredited investor with financial forms, however. Just remember, if you're an accredited investor, you can invest an unlimited amount with us, but if you're not an accredited investor, under this raising uh, strategy, you can only invest up to 10000 with us. Under the IGE, we have the ability to raise up to $5 million, but again, it can still only be from Georgia residents. There's also an 80% test that has to be met. It's a three-part test. I'm proud to report that the deck meets all three points of the 80% test. Even though we only have to meet one part of the test, we meet all three. Just a special note that under this exemption, you cannot resell your ownership interest within six months after acquiring them under state securities law. This is not a regulation that the DEC or the founders came up with. This is state securities law. It has nothing to do with anything that we have put as a restriction. This is state law. Um, all of this is detailed in the PPM, um, so I'm just reiterating and highlighting it again. All right, this chart shows you the process from being interested to actually becoming an investor. And again, some of you are already on the call and have went through this process or going through this process, so thank you. You will submit an application to be an investor with the deck on our website, which is above our head. You see above our head and down there at the bottom. The deck management is going to review your application for compliance because we have to make sure some things are, um, are complied with. Once you're approved, you're going to receive an email with the subscription agreement to sign, as well as how to deposit your investment. Now, once funds are received and the subscription agreement is signed, you're going to receive an investor agreement and an LLC operating agreement that lays out some more of your rights. After you sign the investor agreement and the LLC operating agreement, you'll get a lovely email from our co-founder and secretary, Stacy that will tell you that your interests have been recorded, the amount, and the date. Because remember, you cannot sell your interest within six months of purchase. After rec officially recording your name, we are going to add you to our mass email communi communication system for all our investors. And then going forward, you will get periodic emails from us that give you updates and, and other information that you may need, may need. But we also have a dedicated email for you as well that I'll talk about later. All right, so here are some frequently asked questions, and get ready to ask your questions down there in the chat um, after I finish this slide and go over a few more disclaimers. But here are some frequently asked questions. The first question is, how often will investors receive residual monthly income? And our CFO already went over this, but it is once a quarter issued by our CFO and our outside accountant. And then you will receive individual investment income reports at the end of each calendar year to do with uh, what you need to do with it. The second question is, are financial documents available for inspection? The answer is yes, with a written request at least 10 business days in advance to our CFO, Teresa. Third, if I want to resell my ownership interest after the six-month holding period, how or who can I resell the interest to? You can sell to other owners in the deck or other Georgia residents. However, as we stated, one of the downfalls of this particular investment and one of the risks is that there is no readily available secondary market for selling ownership because we're a private company and we're not like a public company where you can go to this public stock exchange and just trade shares. We're a private company, so it is harder to find a buyer. Uh, number four, can I get a refund of funds once submitted? Unfortunately not, because once we receive your funds, we put your money to work for you and for all the investors. So please, again, please read all documents before investing. Also remember the six-month holding period. So once you have submitted funds 
and you are recorded, you are locked into that six month holding period from reselling. The next question is, can couples invest the minimum of $2,500 as one unit? No, the minimum investment is $2,500 per natural person. So it is individually. Next, what happens if the debt can't secure the targeted property? The CPM lays out the criteria from the founders on the property we would eventually like to purchase. And we'll continue to work with our fabulous team of realtors that we have as founders to find a suitable property. Remember, our number one priority is to you as the investors to make sure that, that property is investable for you. We will update the website and the PP link on, uh, PPM link on the website as soon as changes are um, available. So just keep checking back on the, uh, on the website and we will give you the updates to the PPM and on the property. And then the last question is, if I have a question during any part of becoming an investor or while I'm an investor, who do I contact? We have a dedicated email that is monitored daily and directed to the correct team member and founder at info at dollarempowered.com. So that's info at dollarempowered.com. All right, before we take your questions, I just want to reiterate some disclaimers. The first one is that neither this presentation or offering is approved or endorsed by the Securities and Exchange Commission or any state regulatory agency. Number two, as with any investment, please consult with your attorney and for, or financial professional before making any investment. Number three, this investment opportunity involves risk to all or part of your investment. Therefore, please conduct your own due diligence before deciding to invest. Number four, the representations made during this presentation are such change when noted in the presentation and estimated when otherwise noted in this presentation as well. Number five, you are encouraged and required to certify that you have read the PPM before you can invest in this opportunity. And number six, for this presentation, we will only be answering questions that are not included in the PPM for time's sake. So we want, really want to get to the questions um, that can't be answered by that PPM. So we're not being rude. We just want to make sure we get to those questions that are not in that document. So if we refer you to the PPM, that's the reason why. All right, so now that we went through that, you saw all our smiling faces. Who wants to join us? If you're interested, you can apply for this opportunity directly on our website at www.dollarempowered.com. The deadline is July 1st of this year or whenever we raise our remaining funds. So once we get to that 837500 then we are going to close off. Um, membership units are limited. If you have any questions after this presentation, feel free to email us. Please, please, please write your um, information down in the chat so that we can get to your questions. So if you have a question, please, please, please write it down in the chat at this moment and we will get to it. So let me stop sharing the screen so I can yeah, Darshan, we already have some, some right. questions coming in. Okay, I can't see the questions, so can you read them out? I can, yes. So okay. um, uh, the first one is going to be from Don Smart. Um, just because it's the first thing that jumped up because now the questions are popping up. <laughs> is the full amount due at one time? Well, the minimum amount is due at one time. Um, however, if you want to do 2500 now and 2500 later, you can. But the minimum at one time is $2,500. Um, and then if you want to invest in, the, in uh, later, more later, you can, so long as we have not met our subscription, which is the 837500 If we've met it by that time, then you might not be able to invest at a later time. But to answer her question, $2,500 is the minimum to invest at one time, yes. Awesome. And that actually answered like three of the questions. Um, but here's another, um, and this one is from Atira Rochester, and please excuse me if I did not say that correct, um, but we are very thankful you are with us today. Um, let's see, what will be the process for re reviewing and accepting new tenants, um, and will the debt have an office in the property? 
So that's a very good question. Um, it obviously depends on the property that we ultimately end up with. If it's 100% occupied, obviously we're not going to kick a tenant out in order for us to have, have an office. And really the goal is to maximize uh, cash flow. And so if we're occupying it, obviously that's going to take away from our, from our cash flow. So that's going to have to be a conversation that the founders have. Um, but what was the, the question before the occupancy one about how? Uh, how will we, uh, let's see, what will be the process for reviewing and accepting new tenants? And I'll pretty much answer that because that is going to be reliant on, you know, obviously in compliance to, you know, regulatory issues with the way we do fair housing um, when applications come. But we are actually going to be hiring a property management company to oversee uh, how the, the tenant selection process is actually adhered to. So um, that way we make sure we're always in compliance there. Um, looking through, uh, let's see. Uh, someone asked if the financials were showing up small. Uh, let's see. If you, if you view the PPM, it's very big in the PPM. So if go to PPM and click on that, then you'll be able to blow it up. Okay, so we have a question from M. Terry. In the presentation, you indicated innovative updates for post-COVID. Does that mean you will not begin updates until after the pandemic? What parameters are you using to determine uh, see, to determine post-COVID, assuming the updates are key to the appreciation of the building? Great question. That is an excellent question. So, who would like to take that one? Well, let me, let me just uh, <laughs> put a clarification. We we weren't saying we we're waiting to after COVID to make the uh, the um, the upgrades. We were saying the upgrades are going to deal with our business environment in a post COVID environment. Um, so we're not going to wait until after COVID. It's just the improvements are going to help us, you know, generate business um, that has changed after COVID. But um, I will let someone else. Uh, take a stab at the uh, question about uh, making sure that the upgrades are cash yielding. So it's we're obviously going to uh, con make considerations because you know we're always in an ever evolving industry, right? Um, so as units become available, we'll always assess to see where the best. You know, again, being innovative but with respect to people still being in their leases um, and being able to accommodate. It's a different if we had an approach of an already vacant building versus this is already occupied. So we'll be able to um, look at the uh, improvements as units are available to make the best and, and most optimal um, improvements to, to make the investment even greater. Um, and then he furthered in, uh, can couples invest as a couple if you invest 5,000? Keep in mind, and I'll just take that one just as you just reiterated earlier, is that it's minimum $2,500 per person. So even as a couple, yes, your total is 5,000, but it is designated under each person as a person. Um, and we are very excited that uh, Ms. Terry or Ms. Terry, you will be joining us and, and your spouse. So thank you. Um, <laughs> uh, let's see. Can the properties for purchase be presented to the deck by members? If so, can the realtor member receive a commission? And Donna, thank you very much for that uh, question. And if this, this particular uh, choice does not work out, um, then we will definitely look to see what else is available out there. Um, and obviously being a deck member will be nice. And, uh, and, and so, yeah, we will definitely love uh, any assistance to that and, and look at how that compensation will be um, given later. And if anybody else has anything to add to that while I'm going through the questions, please feel free. I just wanted to thank everybody uh, again. We're at almost 100 participants. We had almost 200 to sign up. So I know some people uh, emailed me and said they can't wait to see this presentation. So if we haven't said thank you again, thank you so much. Uh, it is amazing to see this many people interested in really changing our community, particularly given the fact that we're still in the middle of a pandemic and people are still having to make tough economic discussions. So the fact that you're on here 
we just wanted to say thank you so much again and particularly thank you to those of you that have already applied and already sent in your money. Um, we are just looking to do uh, amazing, amazing things. So thank you for being one of the first uh, people to, to, to um, be with us on this journey and uh, we look forward to even better things in the future. So I just wanted to say that on, on behalf of all the founders and if anybody else has a thank you to give, uh, feel free to chime in. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I did owe that. Um, actually, it's really good to see a lot of people uh, and you know a lot of the people and that. I, that, that goes in a, a test to our uh, community involvement and engagement in DeKalb County. And this opportunity is literally near and dear to all of us. And we, we, with you joining today, we expect that the same way that you're feeling, the same passion, the purpose for making it better in our community. So we all are elated to have all of you join us today and we look forward to working with you. Yes. I've got another question here from B. Gibson. What level of due diligence is being done and when will those results be disclosed, i.e. appraisal, inspections, and environmentals? And this is a very good question, Mr. or Ms. Gibson. Um, so we thank you for it. Um, does someone want to answer that? I'm going to leave that to the realtors. Yes. <laughs> So, and I say it's a good question. Um, I have an answer, but I'm willing to let Stacey or Edwina take first. Mm -hmm. You're on, you're on mute, Stacey. Oh, she's going to say, go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> so it's partially why we're not doing an investor tour before. Um, and it's just because, you know, there's certain things that we as founders um, or even as party into the contract that we can't just disclose information out for public knowledge. It is still in a due diligence process of a contract, so things still have to be remain in, in house. Um, as much as we value, uh, you know, the level of commitment that you will make as an investor of the group, the founding members will be, you, will be the ones helping uh, navigate this process to be successful. Again, you are our first priority with this investment, so we want you to know that um, that there are fully capable people that we have as an attorney, we have community advocates, and we have real estate brokers involved, as well as a real estate attorney to help review all these things to make sure that we are selecting the right choice for you. So we hope that you'll entrust us with these, uh, with that to uh, to review all to make the best decision for this group and again we do appreciate your investment um the next qu uh, question from miss hall is can i invest this with for my son or do this investment only for women um and i think that meant to say or is this investment only for women and we really appreciate that question um, and shout out to Valerie, um, who wrote an amazing piece, um, but it is open to men, women, other, whatever you identify as, like black, white, other, again, you are welcome to invest with us. Yes, our founders are black women, um, and we thank you for allowing us to shine for you, but we represent all, and we are making sure that everyone feels included with this investment project. And if anybody else would like to take an answer to that, as I scroll through, like 20 questions just popped up all of a sudden. <laughs> I, got, I got a question um, if uh -huh. nobody else has anything. Does any of the other founders want to add anything? Well, I did want to just add that in. I mean, literally, um, I think I disclosed that I'm the president of the NAACP, and I'm literally um, uh, looking for everything to be equitable. So although you see black people leading this, this is literally open to anybody who wants to invest. And I, again, reiterate that this is the opportunity for all people to get involved. And you've not seen this <coughs> anywhere else. So we're really looking forward to what we can do for DeKalb County. Anybody and Darsha, you might want to go into the age. They have to be over 18 unless things are situated where they can enter into contracts if they're under 18. Right. So uh, when we say anyone, we mean any adult. Uh, that's, yeah. that's a Georgia resident. Um, I'm not an estate planning attorney, so if you want to put property in your son or daughter's name that's a minor, you're going to have to speak to uh, an estate planning attorney. I have a referral for one, um, but I don't know from a trust 
set up point if, you know, uh, what the parameters are around that. But yes, adults over the age of 18 that are Georgia residents, anybody can, can invest in this opportunity. Um, I have a question that says, would you also be giving construction contracts to firms in DeKalb County? Um, I'm going to say uh, before anybody else adds, wants to add anything that we don't have any plans on constructing anything from scratch. We're going into an actual fully built building. But if you're asking if we're going to try as much as we can to award it to DeKalb County residents, absolutely. Um, that's why our accountant obviously uh, is, uh, uh, is, um, that is headquartered in DeKalb County. Um, because we do want it to be DeKalb County focused and we um, are very, very aware of the RFQ process to make sure that we get all the applications in and give everyone a chance, but obviously uh, we want to give it to um, our, our brothers and sisters that reside here and, and that work here. So hope, does anybody else have anything to add to that? No, ma'am. And we have some really great question coming up here. Would there be other opportunities to invest as you procure other properties, or would this be only time to invest with the deck? And that's from Kristen Rogers. Thank you. Well, thank you for looking forward. We appreciate that. Um, Stacey, did you want to say something? Yeah, I was just going to go ahead and, and answer that one and just say, absolutely, thank you so much for looking forward. However, right now, we really want to focus on this first project and put all of our attention on this one. And before we start thinking about moving ahead, so but but stick around with us, and and we'll see what happens next. But we really want to, as our duties to all of our investors, we're just going to concentrate on this one for right now. Um, I have a question here from Charlie Whitfield. Um, great presentation, thank you. Um, are there other requirements in addition to financials? And I think that's pretty much outlined in the PPM. Um, or he can go, he can go in a, you know, you don't have to push the submit button. You can go to the application that's on the website right now, and whatever's on the application is the qualifications. It will, it will lay it out for you. Uh, B. Gibson has another one that says, do lease and market support 4% annual increases in rent seems a little high. Um, thank you, and as a real estate broker, Trust me, in this market right now, 4% is is very small, it seems, as, as right now, as, as aggressive as I see our rents going up. But we have taken a very modest approach um, in the way that we reviewed where we would like to take um, the deck and this, this certain offering um, where we would like to make it grow. And so this is something we have considered, um, but we think... Um, we we can stand to be uh it'll, it'll, it'll be good so um thank you mr love uh they're looking forward to joining um uh, we have a lot of people that's proud of us we appreciate that and let's see uh let's see does hold on. somebody says this qualifies a natural person um can we invest through a self-directed IRA? Does that qualify as a natural person investment? A natural um, person was in quotes, so that's a serious question. <laughs> uh, yeah, so... Uh, <laughs> Attorney. Read, yeah, right. I, I got to put on my investor advisor uh, hat. Read that question for me one more time to make sure. Oh, okay, hold on. Let me go back up. Let me go back up. Um, can we invest through a self-directed IRA? Does that qualify as a natural person investment? So what qualifies as a natural person just in general is whose name is going to be recorded on the ledger. If it's a business, that's not a natural person. If it's coming from your IRA account, but it's coming from your IRA, individual IRA account, and not like some trust or something like that, that's a, that is an entity, then yes. So long as the person that is, you know, getting the credit recorded on the corporate ledger is a natural person individual, the answer is yes. That's a good one. So Donna Cade asked a very good question. Um, would you consider land purchases? 
Um, Donna, I'll go ahead and take this one, ladies. It's just right now where our focus is, we're looking for something that's going to give immediate returns. Um, so that way we feel as being good stewards of your investment, the ultimate goal is to have returns. Um, and so in order to uh, for us to move forward, we, we were not considering doing any build outs as of now. Um, and so folks, and also that's occupied, if anybody else has anything to that, um, please feel free as I continue reading here. Okay, I got another one uh, from Mr. Terry or M. Terry. Let me just go M. Terry. All right. How long do you have to purchase 6866, I think I meant 6886 Main Street? If you don't raise the money, will it be held in an escrow until the next property is identified? We're going to let our CFO uh, take that last question. Yes. <laughs> the, the answer, thanks for your question. Uh, yes, it will be held. Uh, we actually have a holding account um, until we are able to purchase and, and raise our funds. So, mm -hmm. and then the, uh, Go ahead. I'm sorry. No, read the, the previous question. I know you had two questions. Oh, yeah, two. Oh. Well, hold on. Now I got to go back up. Uh, Y'all killing me. <laughs> if you don't raise the money, will it be held in escrow until the next property is identified? Oh, that was it? Oh, I yeah. got it. Was okay. it. <laughs> Sorry. Okay. Latoya Maddox asks, asks can, you, can the quarterly proper, profits be reinvested or must be distributed? That's an accountant question, um, and our accountant is out of the country right now, so he is not on the on the call. But if you email that email address, and let me uh, put it in the chat somewhere, if you email info mm -hmm. at dollarempowered.com, and it's here in the chat, um, then uh, we will get that answer for you because that sounds like um, it's going to have some some type of tax consequences, and I don't, I don't want to tell you, I don't want to tell you anything wrong. Um, of course, I, I would love for you to, uh, to, to reinvest it, but then, um, you know, we would have to do some, some back end calculations. So let us, let us ask our accountant just to make sure. And so, and just as a follow up to that, that's the beautiful thing about the deck. Um, is that we have key people identified as a part of this group to making sure that we are staying, uh, you know, along compliance lines. And, um, and we don't want to give you any false impressions or answers, <laughs> right? <laughs> uh, Bona Allen says, this is a very Thank impressive you. presentation and well done, folks. Thank, Thank you. you. Right. Kind, sir. Thank you. Thank you. Did Thank you have you. something to say? Well, I just, I see a, a couple of people have their hands raised and I just wanted to ask if they could just put their questions in the chat. We don't want to miss anybody. Yes. Yeah, it's like 33 messages are coming up and so I'm trying to read them at, at a time here trying to go through all the questions. Um, will follow-up questions uh, be added to the website? And yep. And we have, okay, can quarterly profit, well we already asked that one. There's another. In the event the project falls through, will the investors get their funds back? I think we just answered that one. Yeah, so just to reiterate, once you hit the submit button, okay, that goes into um, recording with our corporate secretary. And remember, there's a six-month holding period. So when you hit the submit button, you're stuck in that six-month holding period. Now, we do take those funds, and as the CFO said, put it into an escrow account. So if the targeted property falls through, we'll look for another property. But do not push the submit button or send us your funds unless you – are intent on holding it for six months, okay? Um, and so, yes, please review this, the PPM, please review this presentation again. Again, it's going to be recorded and it's going to be put up on the website because we want you to be very clear before you invest what the risks are and how this process works. Now, Melissa Paul has a great question as well. She lived in Georgia for, re for years but has a Florida license as she goes back and forth home often for school reasons. Does that pose a problem? It does. Um, residence has a very legal meaning. 
So if you vote in Florida, it doesn't matter, you know, how how much you come back to Georgia. If your license is in Florida, it doesn't matter how much you, you come back to Georgia. Um, and so, um, unfortunately, I do not think you're going to qualify as a resident under the uh, ex under the exemption, particularly if you can't show us like a piece of information because you need that to even apply. Um, but if you want to email me um, some more details about your situation, maybe there's something in there that makes it different, just email uh, at info at dollarempowered.com just to check. Um, but remember, you do have to be a Georgia resident. And one of the ways you can show that is you have a voter registration card, you got a, you know, a gun license here, you got a, 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 a driver's license, you can show you know, something um, that proves that you are a Georgia resident because we don't want to lose that exemption. Awesome. And I mean, you know, you can always move on everything over to Georgia. We could use them votes. All right. Great presentation. What ways have been identified, if any, to cut operation costs, allowing investors to have greater gains? Well, that that is a, a very good question. Um, and anybody else can can chime in because we've all seen the financials. But uh, one of the sort of drawbacks to having an older building, historic building like we showed you, uh, is the energy efficiency is not at its best. So you'll see from our budget, we want to make all these improvements, these cash yielding upgrades, because we want to make sure that we take full advantage of um, making sure that the energy is conserved in, in those older buildings like that. So we'll make sure that we update the system and that should bring down uh, our utility costs significantly once we go around the building and, uh, and, and are able to make it more energy efficient. But that is one um, thing that I think we should, we should focus on. But if anybody, any of my other co-founders have anything, please chime in. Well, so much of cutting operation costs, the biggest thing to help on greater gains is we're going to raise them rent. So um, just throwing that out there. I'm just throwing that out there. So <laughs> anybody else? And we're, def and we're definitely we're definitely doing both, right? So it's yeah, double, right. double the, uh, the, the bottom line is if you cut costs and you raise revenue. Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay. Is there any additional questions? Um, I'm I'm very happy for all the congratulatory remarks, uh, but if there's any additional questions, we want to make sure that we have given you adequate amount of time to ask. Um, let's see. Okay, why was this particularly prop why was this particular property presented? I'm sorry, it all of a sudden it jumped up. Yep. Why was this particular property selected? We did have others in mind, um, but as we stated earlier, the because we were being very specific to uh, DeKalb County, um, we wanted to be intentional about you know reinvesting back in communities that look like us. Um, you know, so to speak that, you know, that is a very targeted, you know, narrowed down, you know, it's the realities of where we are in America right now. And so as we went looking for uh, projects, um, we were finding things that maybe didn't fit the mold that we were looking for initially. And that's why this opportunity, it just kept coming back up. Um, you know, we looked at other opportunities where it, the buildings were completely vacant. Um, and thought maybe this could be um, a good opportunity. However, in those areas, the value was a lot higher and with no immediate income. So we thought this was going to be provide the best opportunity for our investors. One, to make sure that as we build your trust, you continue to trust that we're being the best stewards of your investment. And that's why we felt that this was a great opportunity, um, even for it having historical presence in the community, that it was already occupied, already producing, but it was in a community that was diverse in, in uh, commercial offerings, but yet that looked like, you know, us. so that was my answer. What else you got? <laughs> Well, uh, I mean, when we laid out our criteria, our criteria was one, that the property must be in GAP. Um, mm -hmm. Two, it must produce um, uh, wealth generational uh, income. So the, uh, 
those two things um, kind of mapped out as priority. Although um, what Amy uh, stated uh, helped to build in it because it is a mode there because all of us are passionate about our community. We did talk about the uh, impacts of what part of the cab. Um, however, that doesn't mean that we won't go through all the, the parts, but we were trying to be intentional about how we can um, impact our community. And then just to even re-add on that, and thank you, Teresa, for, for pinpointing something. You know, when we talk about put, putting dollars back into, um, you know, black communities or communities of color, things like that, we're always thinking it has to be residential. But we were being very intentional to make sure that we looked at it from a commercial aspect, making sure that our com commercial buildings stood out better in presence and um, sh it's just a, it's a part of real estate. So we wanted to take the approach that we were being intentional about commercial offerings. So, Stacey and Edwina, anything else to add? No, Amy's doing an awesome job. <laughs> <laughs> you don't know me with getting the mic. Okay. <laughs> we have a great, another great question is, excellent presentation. Will quarterly payouts be issued by check or EFT, electric funds transfer? And that's from uh, Ms. Tobert. We'll let our CFO answer that one. She yeah, should so. get informed, do you? Yeah, so right now we haven't decided on which manner it will be uh, provided to you. So as soon as we, we uh, make that decision, we will um, share that with our um, investors. Okay. Good point, though. Good point, though. Something to think about and um, consider. Awesome. Says, do we, uh, Mr. Johnson says, do we know what the average household income is around the property? I I can tell you because I used to represent Lithonia uh, when I first got to the legislature, and obviously this was this was this was ten years ago. Uh, the the median income in Lithonia, um, you know, they 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 have went through some some things, so it is a lower income um, community that is around it. Um, however, if you go up the street and into Stonecrest, it's a totally different thing. So for people that don't know Lithonia, it is. The population is probably, what I'm guessing, like 1,500, 2,000, maybe at the max. Yeah. It really, it, it is a, it is a circle uh, around um, our building and around City Hall. Tw mm -hmm. You know, 2,000 people max. Um, so it's, it really doesn't have a lot of square footage as far as you know the space, particularly around um, this property. You go up the street and around the corner, you'll see you know 300,000 dollar houses. Um, but the median income around uh, Lithonia, last I checked, was anywhere in the neighborhood between thirty-five to forty thousand. That probably has changed a, a little bit in uh, in the ten years um, since I represented the city. But um, that gives you a background. Does anybody else have anything there? I thought that was a great answer. So thank you. All right. Is there any additional questions? Thank you, Mr. Allen. Um, <laughs> <laughs> sorry, y'all. I'm reading. I'm just reading some amazing things. Um, uh, just the amount of trust that's coming through is just amazing, and looking forward to investing for the long term. Um, what are the? Okay, another one from Mr. Gibson. Where the current lease lengths? Model shows raised of rents of about 100%. How was that justified time frame for rent increases? So again, that's why you have um, you know individuals like myself, Edwina, and Stacy as a part of this journey um, to help represent the founders. Uh, but most importantly, our investors. We are in review of the leases. That's the whole point of the due diligence period. Um, because again, we want to make sure we satisfy our standards 
of what this investment will look like. And trust me, it is going to be, um, and I know you may not know me, but this is why we wanted to do this presentation to make sure you got to know who we were, who our backgrounds are, and know that we are invested in the real estate industry, but most importantly, our communities. Um, and so we are definitely in consider, um, consideration with the lease increases and the impacts that could come from raising the rents, um, no matter how aggressive it is. We are looking at the current leases now, um, the way that the lengths of them are and the actual rental rates to make sure that this is a truly vestible option for us. Again, you are our number one priority on that. And if anyone else has anything to add to that, please feel yes. free. Um, as we stated, one of our risks is in, in this opportunity is that there might be a higher vacancy rate because we are raising rents. Listen, at the end of the day, uh, our fiduciary duty is to each and every one of you as investors. And so whatever we need to do um, to make sure that you get a return on your money that's ethical um, and legal, of course, we need to do. And so our obligation isn't to the tenants, our first obligation. Our first obligation is to you to make money. And so uh, we felt and, and looked at um, the paperwork that has initially been given to us, and we have come to the conclusion that the rents cannot stay as they are right now. You would not make any money, just to be totally honest with you. And, uh, and so it's justified because if you saw the leases that we saw, you would know that based on um, where they are um, in, in their, in their uh, terms and where they can get the same services and free parking and things that they're getting right now, um, that what we're doing um, is not outside the realm of, um, of the value that they're getting. And so we would need to, uh, to, to, to raise those rents in order to make it profitable for you. So hopefully that answers your question. But again, if you need, uh, you know, if that didn't answer your question, then please email us at the info at dollarempower.com. Yeah, we, we really do truly, truly value your trust. Um, and so, again, we were, as stewards of this, and as Darshan said, fiduciary responsibilities, we want to make sure that we are, are looking at everything as a whole to make sure this is a sound investment. But understand that when we selected this, we did take things into consideration um, as how we will do for a betterment of the tenants but also a betterment of the community. And that was our first priority. Well, not first priority, because our first priority is you. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Let's see. And it looks like that might have been, I think I've gotten through all the questions. All right. Great job, Amy. Um, so I'll let each one of the founders just give some lasting um, remarks and thank you to the 74 of you that are still on the call. We appreciate it. Um, just, I just wanted to publicly again thank my co-founders uh, for joining me on this, uh, this journey. We have literally been working on this uh, for such a long time, nine, ten months, um, and I can't tell you the sacrifices that they have made, both financially, both in time, both in um, just so many things. So when I tell you that you are in good hands, uh, many of you know that I don't deal with foolishness and I don't like to waste my time. So uh, if, if, if my reputation precedes me, let me just rest assured you that you have a good team that is willing to go to bat for you. Um, and we're going to do whatever we can um, in order to, to make this experience as smooth for you and as profitable to you. So thank you again to everyone uh, for joining us. Amy, you want to go? Then we'll go to Stacy, Teresa, and Edwina. Yes, thank you, uh, Darshan. I am truly um, thankful for the journey that, one, you asked me to be a part of, um, that uh, I know you made the offering out to many people, and I'm glad that after listening to the presentation, my commitment to this um, was from minute one. Like, um, everyone that knows me knows that I am very truly invested in making sure that our our community actually uh, gets equitable investment opportunities. And I'm just thankful that you allow me to be a part of this journey, but most important that each one of the ladies on here has been truly acceptance of my schedule, <laughs> as crazy it has been. Uh, but most importantly, you understood 
uh, where my heart was in this. And again, I want to thank all the uh, potential investors that are on here with us. I want to just say to you, thank you for taking the time um, to hear us out. And Winga, or Teresa, Stacy, sorry. <laughs> I'll go ahead and go. Um, I, I, I want to ditto um, on what has already been said that, you know, I, I think that this is just a wonderful opportunity um, that I have for being, you know, part of this group of women powerhouses. And it has just really been an incredible journey the past nine months working with these women. Um, as Darshan said, we put a lot of time in, we, we put in our own um, finances uh, to be able to get to where we are. So that, that has just been an awesome opportunity. And to everyone out there that's, that's watching and has taken your time to come here and be with us tonight and to hear about this, thank you. Thank you for your interest. Um, thank you for coming and hearing us out. We really do believe that this is a very important for us to look at this disparity. Um, I think most of us do know that it exists, but um, just to be able to come together and make a decision that we want to do something collectively about it. And I think that for, for me, that is really the driving force in all of this, the opportunity to work with uh, our community that wants to come together, build together and grow together is we just have an exceptional opportunity to be able to do this. So thank you guys for coming, for hearing us out. I hope that you will choose to take this journey with us. Um, who knows where we can go with this, but, you know, also on an educational level, I think that um, for, for me, you know, this is, this is educational too, because there are a lot of communities that have been doing this for a long time. Um, but for us, a lot of us, this is, this might be new. And so just the opportunity to learn how to do this and see how it can help us to build that wealth. Um, it's, it's just really an awesome opportunity. So I'm, I'm thankful to be here. I hope more of you will want to join us and let's get it, y'all. <laughs> okay. Um, for me, uh, again, thank you for um, everyone who registered, um, that we got the interest sparked up for us to make sure we bring our A game. <laughs> uh, second for staying on and, and, and for all the comments too uh, and, and good that everyone had questions and felt uh, comfortable enough to ask the questions um, of us um, I too ditto what all of the co-founders and my sisters have stated um, and, and this literally is uh, purposeful for me and also a passion uh, for me but to be able to uh, be a part of a group where you can literally uh, utilize your passion and purpose um, and your professionalism um, to gain uh, the wealth that we've been talking about. And we know that there are disparities, as, as Stacey has stated. Um, I believe that we can be the change that we want to see, um, as President Obama um, stated. I also believe that I'm sick and tired, sick and tired of the coming in our community and taking over. So yes, this is the civil rights person in me, um, but I do want, uh, I'm glad that we could have done this in a private mode, but we offered it out to the public and that says a lot uh, about the opportunity. So I'm looking forward to all of you joining in on this journey as we change the cab and, and change the state of Georgia. Thanks. All right, so my heart in all of this is to make sure that our children see that women and especially people of color can do anything everybody else does. And we don't have to stay low. We can be high. We can have what we want to have. And I'm hoping that they will see us and want to be just like us. When I was coming up, I didn't see this, and I am just absolutely proud to be a part of this journey. I'm excited that you all even thinking about being a part of it. We are gonna, we don't take this lightly, and we're gonna do the right thing all the time to make you proud to be a part as well. And thank you for joining us again. My heart is just overwhelmed with the. Um, participation we've had. Thank you all, and we hope you join us. 
Uh, just to um, state that, I mean, I'm trying not to get all sensitive over here, trying to hold uh, the mascara together because the uh, overwhelming feedback I'm getting in the, uh, in the uh, chat box is that uh, people are ready to uh, invest. And um, we are very thank you, thankful for that. Um, and before we conclude, I will echo uh, the words of Ms. Donna Kay. Thank you, Deck. Let's make a difference together. So we look forward to that. Uh, thank you all. All right. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye. Bye.